Okay, he is ready. Well, thank you and a big applause for Matthew. So, who here has heard of Docker? Wow, that's amazing. I thought I was going to have to explain what Docker is, but you all know what it is, right? Great. So, this talk is called useflake.nix, not Dockerfile. This is, I don't know, I'm preaching to the choir. Maybe you know what the issues are with building software with Docker, maybe you don't. But I'm going to try and explain why it's not really that reproducible and why you can use Nix instead. So, why use Dockerfiles? Well, I don't know. But why use flake.nix? Because builds via Docker files aren't reproducible, but they are repeatable. So that means that you, know, you can run the same instructions, but it does not mean that you'll get the same result. So what is Nix? Nix is a expression language. It's a domain-specific language, which was invented by Elko Dolstra in his PhD thesis in 2003. Um, it's lazily evaluated which means it's more performant for doing package management. It's a purely functional programming language, which means it's not procedural. So the order in which you define things does not matter. It's declarative rather than imperative, so things are defined as a expression rather than as a sequence of events that you want to occur, much like in a Docker file. And yeah, in that, in that way, everything is an expression and there are no side effects. So here's a basic abstract example. This is called an attribute set. Uh, in this example, x is equal to a list, which has a string inside of it, y. Uh, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to the expression 1 plus 1. So let's uh, evaluate what x would have been. So x is a string, uh, y inside of a list. And the same for y, it's just 1. And z is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So here's a basic concrete example of me compiling Hello World from GNU source code. So I'm going to cat the examples, hello world.nix. This is the Nix expression which defines how to compile this software. And then I'm going to Nix build it. I'm going to look at the result that it creates. The result is a symlink to this object store called slash Nix slash store, where the immutable software packages live. Right? Um, we can see that it's a dynamically linked x86 executable with its interpreter patched to uh, the correct interpreter. And then I run it at the end, so you see hello world is there. So what is the expression at the top where it says let packages import Nix packages, et cetera? So that is a function call to standard env.mk derivation. The first argument is name, which is a string. So I'm going to call this package hello world. And the source code is going to come from uh, GNU's FTP server. And we're going to hash this, and this is really important. We're going to say what the SHA-256 sum is ahead of time. Now this way, if anyone else uh, sees the expression in the future and they build it, and that tarball has changed. Well, we'll know about it because the SHA-256 won't match. So this data is really important for reproducibility and security. So by comparison, let's see what a Docker file would look like. So from Ubuntu latest, there's two problems here, right? Ubuntu, even if we could find the original Docker files for Ubuntu, could we reproduce it? Or do they have many steps inside of it that aren't reproducible? Like apt install this, apt install that. Because every time you do apt install, you've lost the reproducibility because it's going to give you a different result the next time it runs. Latest, latest when? When I run the Docker build, right? Uh, so the, the Docker files are not intrinsically attached to their, to their results. So the result of a Docker file is basically like a binary. You give that binary to people, and you, you may never see the Docker file ever again, right? And that's not quite true for Nix expressions. Uh, so apt-get update, it's going to resolve a different package list uh, the next time it runs. So the next time I run Docker build, hello might just not be there. So we've got to, have to run it five times, and then hopefully uh, Debian servers are, uh, are up again rather than down. And yeah, but that's not, that's not the only problem. Every time we do apt-get install, hello, it's going to create a package database, and this package database is going to have timestamps in it. There's going to be tons of reproducibility issues just at every level in this Docker file. And then the last offender is CMD hello. This assumes that the hello package actually puts a binary called hello on the path. So maybe hello is not the name. Maybe it's hello-world. So there's nothing but assumptions in this Docker file. And indeed, if we use this method here, where we save the result of building it into a tarball, and then we look at the tarball, the tarball is different. Now, this isn't the full story. This is a bit of a cheat, right? As a matter of fact, if you extract this, you'll get another tarball, and inside of that is a layer and a file system hierarchy, like slash user slash bin, et cetera. 
So um, we'd have to inspect that with Diffoscope to understand the true reason that this is not reproducible. But I mean, this, this uh, is a nice example because it shows that you know, even when they package the tarball for the OCI image, this tarball, this image that we're going to load into Docker, even that step is not necessarily reproducible because tarballs pack and unpack, uh, serialize and deserialize in a different order every time operations are performed. So how do we do this with a Nix flake instead? So there's a function someone made called, I, didn't, I only wrote this presentation this morning, so I missed that out, but it's called um, Docker Tools Build Layered Image. Right? So someone in Nix packages, which is a, uh, is a library of 80,000 software packages and Nix expressions and functions and things, um, so they, they made this, this uh, function called Build Layered Image. And this is essentially a reproducible bash script for producing container images. Right? So my container image equals running that function with the first argument name, my container image, the tag, uh, latest. Contents is a list of things that I want to be in the container. And config.cmd is the entry point that we saw in the Docker file earlier, which was hello. So uh, let's just have a look here. So th this hello here, that's what we're going to map to in the next expression config.command equals hello. So this is the first thing it's going to run when the container boots. So uh, this is in a data structure called a flake. So a flake has inputs and outputs. We say inputs.nixpackages.url equals this GitHub repo. And whenever we run a nix command on this, it's actually going to generate a flake.lock. Uh, so I'd just like to show you that before I get too far in. So flake.lock. So we no longer have that problem of like latest being latest when I run the command, because it creates a lock file and tells you what it was when I ran the command. And this is immutable and stored in the Git repo where I provide these expressions or uh, tell you to run it from. So yeah, let's, uh, let's build it. So we're going to build my container image. We're going to look in the result. Then we're going to load that result into Docker. And then we're going to run it with Docker. And this has all been done. Like The container image has been built with Nix reproducibly. And then ran with Docker. So I'm just going to run that. Oh, dear. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I got, got scared there for a moment. OK, so it created a result, put it in the Nix store where it lives uh, reproducibly. And it loaded it into Docker, and then it ran it. So there you go. Much more reproducible than the, than the Docker file. right? So why is this the case? So Docker is repeatable, but not reproducible defined instructions, but it trusts the internet unconditionally, and it doesn't perform any hashing, or at least it doesn't encourage people to do that. Uh, Docker files do not provide you with a tool set for performing reproducible builds, and Nix is basically a, uh, a C++ binary written by Elko Dolstra, which implements the Nix expression language, which gives you a tool set for implementing reproducible builds. So what does Nix guarantee? So it guarantees that we're going to get the same inputs from the internet every time, and we're going to perform the build process inside of a sandbox. And hopefully, the result is deterministic. Uh, it, gar it guarantees that, but it does not guarantee that the build process, in fact, is deterministic. An example of this would be the Java compiler. The Java compiler will put timestamps into every jar file that it creates, every piece of Java source code. Now, of course, we're not going to get rid of the system call that allows the process to gather the time at this point in time. Um, but uh, that, that, was, that was a decision because it, it built, it, sorry, it, um, it broke a lot of build processes. So instead, we have to do things like touch 1970 at every build step so that we get rid of the timestamp and the intermediate steps when we compile things. Um, so yeah, there's lots of reasons that a build may not be deterministic, and Nix can't help with that. But what it can do is perform the same build with the same inputs every single time and hope that the output is deterministic, which is a lot more than, than many other tools can do. So, uh, do I have any extra time? Do I have? Uh, <laughs> yes, we have enough time for questions. Oh, uh, I didn't want to go to questions straight away. I just wanted oh. to show uh, three really cool things. So, Nick's shell is a way of trying things before you buy. So, I'm going to SSH into my server because the internet here might just drop out. Um, so, I'm going to Nick's build. Oh, sorry, Nick's shell. Next packages, hashtag, I don't know, Python 3. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have Python 3 now. But if I get out of the Python 3 interpreter, 
and try and run Python 3 again after exiting out of this temporary shell. I don't have Python 3. I don't have Python on any of my systems installed globally, right? It's just I, I install it when I need it and only when it's necessary. Now, because it's an expression language, if I go into the REPL, I can say something like, let's load Nix packages. And then Python 3 has a member function inside of it with packages. And I can say, inside of P, put all of the whatever it is, 20,000 Python libraries that exist in the world from PyPy. And I'm going to give it a list of Python libraries that I want for this particular instance of Python. P dot, I don't know, NumPy. It's going to evaluate that and create a derivation. And then I'm going to build that derivation. And it's going to do all of this reproducibly. So if you, you know, evaluated this expression, you get the same path, you get the same output path on your machine. And then I can ls in there and see that we've got bin and we've got Python interpreter. And if we run that, we'll have a Python 3 that can import NumPy. Oh. But if I exit this and exit again, you know, I don't have Python anymore. Go into a Nix REPL and say I want Python 3. Oop, got to load Nix packages. I'm going to build Python 3. Note that I'm not defining a function. I just want Python 3. I don't want Python 3 with NumPy. Let's take a look in the output. This Python cannot import NumPy because there is no such thing. It's not global. There is no global state. There's no global thing that's being modified. Everything is a copy every single time uh, with something added or without something added. Um, another thing that you can do is you can cross-compile using Nix. So in Nix packages, there is a package set called packages cross, which is all of the 80,000 Nix packages that you can get. Um, whoops. Yeah, so like, I don't know. Python's there. We've got um, NumPy, and we've got um, Firefox, and we've got you know a set of 80,000 packages, which we can do what we want with. So what do we want to cross-compile all those 80,000 packages? Well, Packages Cross has in it, if we tab complete, all of the architectures we want. So let's say RISC-V, 64-bit, and then, I don't know, Hello World. Now, I think I've done this, and this is another benefit of reproducible builds, is that things are cached. I did this last month. It puts something in my slash nix slash door. It's still there. It's not going away. I haven't garbage collected it yet, and that's another concept that Nix has is garbage collection. The file system is memory, is what they call it in the thesis. So um, I, I did this last month, so it's still there. So that's why I completed. But if I want to rebuild it just to show up, it can do this. And this is reproducibly cross-compiling Hello World for RISC-V, 64-bit. And it's done. And in slash bin, we have a dynamically linked RISC-5 binary. And the fun part is, despite the fact that I'm actually running on an x86 kernel, I can still, I can still actually execute this because I have something called bin FMT registrations enabled on my system. And the way that that's done is also very easy, um, thanks to Nix, because Nix OS, of course, has many options. And I can just say, OK. Uh, bin FMT registrations. Yeah, I want to be able to run um, Windows binaries or ARM binaries. I can do that on my x86 system just by putting a list of emulated systems in this option. So that, that, that should um, convince you to use Nix, if, Nix OS if, if nothing else does. Um, yeah, I think I just uh, showed off those three points. So uh, any questions if I have time? If not, uh, then that's my talk. Yeah, if there are any questions, the mics are still in the middle. Uh, if you walk the mic, otherwise the video doesn't have audio, so we all can hear you, but the people re-watching can't. In Dockerfile, you have latest. Step a little bit closer um, to the mic, please. Yeah, thank in you. In Dockerfiles, you have latest, and that's great. You don't have to upgrade it in half a year. Uh, is there something like Nix? Maybe specify, well, latest up to this timestamp? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Docker could, if it wanted to, probably like implement a lock file, um, although I, I haven't seen that. So, so the benefit of Nix here, right, is that you can't do such a thing as latest. It doesn't exist. And that's a good thing for reproducibility. So we take a look at this Docker file, right? It says latest. Uh, now, there's no, there's no, when you run the command, it's going to go and fetch the latest. 
And everyone that runs the Docker build command, every single person on the planet will get a very different result. Right? There is no guarantee. So I have to tag it, I have to say like 2004. Right? But that 2004 could still change technically. If I want it to be really reproducible, and Docker does do this, you can specify a hash. Right? And so, so you know, there is a way around that, but it's the, it's the least of Docker's issues. Right? So this is just one. No, is one well, well, the question would be, is there a next upgrade? Uh, yes, indeed. So let's say flake.lock, flake.nix here has um, nix was 20, 2205. This is a tag, right? So it changes. So if I want to see what that is, I go into the flake.lock and we see that indeed it's the E3583 uh, revision of nix packages. Oops. And if I go to nix packages on GitHub and I go to that, a hash. Uh, what I'm saying, it's a lot of steps to keep your system up to date. Uh, no, it's, it's not. I'm just showing you the full path as to how it's reproducible. So if we go to that commit, we'll see that that commit exists. And this commit was made a few days ago, you know, four days ago. So in four days, you know, a lot might have happened. So we want to go on and we want to advance from this hash, this revision here. So all we have to do is Nick Flake uh, update. And it will go and find what the latest hash is. Looks like D1CA4EA, right? And so this is the step that you do to update the lock file. Um, and once that's done, uh, right now it's extra it actually went and fetched the latest Nix packages and it's extracting the tarball on my laptop. So it's a bit slow because my laptop disk is a bit slow. But, um, okay. but that lock file will be uh, yeah, updated. Fine. That was great. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to be rounding up the questions. Do we have time for one more? Or should we? Yeah, we've got one more speaker. So if you, the other questions, I think they can approach you yeah. afterwards because we really got to move it along. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much. I have a question, but one sentence. If you go to repology.org, you will find of all the distros on the planet, all their versions, and you will find that Nix packages has the most recent of any distro. Beats the pants of anything. Top right, Nix packages unstable. It's the most uh, fresh. It's the largest size, so it's got more packages than Arch. They're fresher than Arch. They're more up to date than Arch. They're more maintained than a lot of other distributions too. Thank you.